In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul says, Thanks be unto God who always leads us in triumphal procession. Or for those of you that like the King James, who always causes us to triumph in Christ. Look, while God wants you and I to triumph in many areas of our life, did you know that this verse has a very specific context and a very specific meaning? That Paul's talking about God causing us to triumph in a very specific thing? Do you know what it is? In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul is describing a situation where his personal plans had to suddenly change. He had planned on meeting his friend and mentee, Titus, in a city called Troas. But when he got to Troas, he realized that Titus wasn't there. And so Paul made the decision to change his plans and to travel on to Macedonia in search of Titus. So what happened as a result of this sudden change of plans? Well, not much other than the fact that when Paul got to Macedonia, he did reunite with Titus and the two of them managed to preach the gospel to all the people who were in that region. Paul says that not everyone was saved, not everyone received the gospel that they preached, but the aroma of Christ was made known to all the people of that area. To some people, Christ is the aroma or the scent of life. And to others, those who do not receive him, he is the aroma or the scent of death. This is literally what the Apostle Paul is referring to when he talks about God leading us in a triumphal procession. He's talking about everybody in the area of Macedonia receiving the aroma of Christ, having the chance to hear the gospel and decide whether or not they're going to receive and believe it. But the question is, why is Paul referring to him and Titus making known the gospel of Jesus Christ as a triumphal procession? Why is he using this very specific word, it's the Greek word threombuo, it literally refers to a Roman military parade, the sort of victory parade that they would have after defeating their enemies in battle. Why is he using this word to describe the victory that they had in making known Christ to the Macedonians? There's two things you need to know about Paul's use of this word. The first is this. Every time we make known Christ to the world around us, it's as if God is having his own victory prayed right then and there. God has the victory in Christ Jesus. In Christ, God has defeated sin, death, and everything that separated people from God, their creator. When you make known God's son, God's victor, Jesus Christ, to the world around you, it's as if you are in that moment a part of God's victory parade where he is walking through the streets making known the great, mighty, incredible victory that he has in Christ Jesus. The second thing you need to know about Paul's use of this word is this. Roman military victory parades didn't just include the Roman soldiers who were a part of the victory. No, it also included their enemies, the enemies that they defeated and captured. Every time you make known Christ to the world, you're not only exalting Christ and showing the world God's victory, you're also showing the world how God has defeated his enemies in Christ. That's why the devil hates it when you and I actually talk about Jesus to our friends and neighbors and everyone around us because he is being shown right there in that moment to be defeated, to be done and defeated and dealt with. And he knows that one day his final destruction is coming. So look, as much as God wants to cause you and I to triumph in many areas of our life, this verse is not about you getting that promotion at work or your football team winning the playoff game. Look, all those things are well and good, but this verse is about you joining in God's victory prayed by making known, by boldly making known his victor, Jesus Christ, to the world around you. 
So look, God leads us in triumphal procession every time we make known his son to the world. Every time we make known the fragrance of Christ to the world around us. The last thing this passage says is this, who is sufficient for these things? In other words, it's not you and I that get the credit for making Christ known. It's not you and I and our great evangelistic abilities that brings this to pass. No, it's God's spirit at work within us. God wants to work through you to make known his son, Jesus Christ. And when he does, it's like you are a part in that moment. You are a part of his victory prayed. 